Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel and to another Tiny Bunny video. And I'm gonna be very sad if I get the bad ending. Basha turned around. He looked like an astronaut in this tight hood. If I were to imagine him as a sound, he'd be a differing whistle, a signal given by someone who stands watch. To my desire, there was nobody at the backyard. Apart from a grim-faced Romka, he stood there, his feet wide apart, with his right hand hidden behind his back. Romka's dry lips were tightly pursed. He kept shooting glances at me as he looked around. There he is. Uh, I can see that. Well, hello there, Antasha. What do you want? Oh no, again. He slowly took out a thin, carnivorous, shiny blade from his behind his back. A knife, the steel butterfly of death that flies towards the victim's heartbeat. I stepped back instinctively and rammed my back into Basha. Romka's minion pushed me back. We wanted to know. Do you have any hard feelings for me or Basha? Romka started picking on his yellow nails, looking at me like an evil smirk on his face with a nibble. Well, there, there in the forest, we kinda roughed you up. It's just our poor upbringing, you know? Yeah, not as cultured as you, city folk. Oh, look at his face. Oh my god. He doesn't have teeth. Okay. That's okay. So we get fisty sometime. I nodded, but my eyes glued to the knife. The blade glowed under the settling sun, and Romka's eyes had the same evil glow. Oh no. He stepped towards me. His knife traveled inches away from my coat. One movement, and the steel would cut into the cloth, and if he pushes deeper... A little bird told us that you were snooping about Polina again. I was so scared that it took me a while to remember who Polina was. My brain was malfunctioning, my knees were shaking. Suddenly, our class rep slowly walked up to Romka from behind. I see you boys are getting along quite well. I owe you one, Katya. Oh no, need to thank me, Romka. I always fighting for true love. I'm always fighting, really? <coughs> yes, yes, yes. I'll kill you, I swear. I can hear you. Were you near Polina or not? Well, we, we didn't hang out or anything. The only thing hanging out here will be your guts when I can't open your mouth or your stomach. Really? Why did I read Mel? The blade slid across my sleeve with its dull side and reached my collar. The wind made my face cold, but the bed bead of sweat still tickled from my temple. I switch flipped in my head. It all made sense now. I remember Romka constantly sneaking glances at Polina. I remembered his scrawly handwriting in the questionnaire. Why didn't I study it more in depth? I see you near Polina even once, and you won't get away with a simple bump. Got it? Yes. Now scam. Scram. I was probably so hypnotized by the knife that Romka had to repeat his threat. Scram. I thought about the cold, sharp blade when retreating from the yard. One thing that I don't even understand is I didn't tell the policeman about anything and still Romka and Basha are not on my side. Why? What did I do wrong? I was asking myself whether I had enough courage to break the promise I made to those bastards. The aftertaste of horrible water I drank down my meds with languid in my mouth. My thoughts were focused on Polina. But Romka's threat was also on my mind. I wandered around the house. 
<laughs> really? Olio's talking <laughs> non-stop, at times lifting up her arms and laughing, only to the sudden, suddenly go quiet and give mom a signal to merely look. I was yanked out of the prison of my own mind, whether saddening thoughts packed at my brain like herpes, herpes stopping me from coming back to reality. I started back. Olya looked like a mini version of our mom right now. Well, to be pri precious, prices, okay, it doesn't matter. She looked like a person mom turned into when we moved here, with her intimidating posture and her eyebrows directed towards the ceiling. You weren't listening to me, were you? She tried spitting out those words at me copying facial expressions of the person she spent almost all of her free time with. For a moment, I felt like the light Olya exuded all those years, wandered and wavered in the wind of pro prology changes. Very soon, my beautiful princess will turn into a dragon that was once guardian guarding her present tower. That thought was much scarier to me than any other horror sneaking up to me from the future. Sorry, Olya. I didn't want to make you mad. I just got lost in thought. I looked around the room, my gaze jumping from one object to another like a hungry beast, trying to find anything that could distract Olya. Let's play console. Olya pouted, but there was a spark of interest in her small emerald eyes. The Snow Queen's eyes shred in inside, then started thawing. And what about the second control? It's not working. And Dad has no time to fix it. Hmm, we can play with the light gun. What do you want to play? Cowboys? Ducks? You're better than me at both. Oh, come on. You must have been practicing the whole time I was away from home. <laughs> Olya burst out laughing. Her heart was warm once again. How did you know? But I'm a good shitter now. You've already lost. You've picked the wrong fight here. Come on, turn it on. Little Olya jumped towards the TV set and after flicking the power switch started blindly feeling around the back side of the phone tone, trying to plug the console's cable into the antenna input. Bits of TV shows started flashing on the CRT screen when I armed myself with a remote to look for the channel with the sought after deadly sign. Did anything interesting happen at home? It was a mundane question for me. I didn't put any actual meaning behind it. But Olya's expression suddenly changed. She lost all of the childish nonchalantness she worked so hard to acquire before. What happened, Olya? My sister managed to put the cable in its place and started brushing off her the dust of covered hand. She was clearly looking for courage to continue the conversation. Mom, she... Olya went silent, and for a moment I thought I saw tears welling up in her eyes. She had this scary thing happen to her again. My sister looked at me with wet eyes. She had a fit, huh? This had happened before, but it was a rare occasion. Now that we'd moved to uh, this godforsaken place, Mom's fits rose in frequency. Dad brought home a big fish. It was wrapped in a newspaper and had a foul smell. Mom got angry again, and then she took a knife. Olya squirmed, looking fright fearfully out of the window. They started screaming at each other. I froze, imagining my little sister so small and unnoticeable, standing in the kitchen doorway. She wasn't even trying to hide, our parents just paid her no mind at all. 
and then one struck it, like this. Olia slightly moved her fist downward, initiating a strike. She hit the fish. She was still alive, Tasha. It was. It must have been in pain. And mom, mom. It was easy to imagine what happened next. The withering fish with a blade between its fins squirted some foul smelling musk into mom's face. Whether death got this close to my mom, be it when a person was hitting by a bush bus in front of us and their blood was smeared all over the windshield, or when grandma chopped off a chicken's head, mom would always get into a weird, dreadful fit. Her eyes would roll over, she would fall on her face like a fleshy cut tree and start withering, just like that agonizing fish turning over chairs and blubbering out bits of scary sentence. And what about dad? Did he help her? Olya shredded, as if just remembering it pained her. Yes, but at first... He started laughing, Tasha. He let out an evil laugh when he saw that mom was in trouble. But then he cried. Olya's story had me rise an eyebrow. It seemed like the forest oozing madness had not only completely consumed our mom, but also affected our strong and courageous dad. I quickly stepped toward Olya and locked her in a tight embrace. She dug her face into my chest and I could feel my shirt becoming wet. Oh, that's so sad, I can't. Why did he laugh though? Is that like a... That was a bad reaction for him. Why are they bullying each other, Tasha? Are they crazy? I shuddered, unable to justify the actions of our parents. Mm. I had run out of words, and all I could do was hug Olia even tighter. Oh, she has a cute. <laughs> oh my god. Really? My heart is beating so fast. Why did that? Oh my god. Olya screamed and hid behind me. Turn it off quickly. No matter how many times she saw the news intro, she would always react the same, just like when she saw that all. Yeah, because that intro is terrifying. Why would they do that? And why would they just... Oh my god. My heart is still beating. I can't. I mean, I also got goosebumps every time this ghastly face appeared on the screen, so I immediately complied with my sister's request. Oh my god, if you, saw, if you guys saw my reaction. That's why I need to film videos with my face. Why am I doing this? Oh my god. Play. Finally, the game selection screen showed up from the crack cartridge that was bundled with the console. Too bad most of the names here were just different rivals of the same game. I picked up the grey rectangular control and started looking around the pixel letters to find the similar English word for duck. Background music from the menu soothed Olia's mind and she asked in a calm voice, how are, you, how are things at school? Nothing good. The school is new, but my treatment is the same. As if we mo never moved. I'm so tired of this. <laughs> I'm, I'm so tired of the screamers too. Before despair could lead me down, it's the depressing road toward the clashes of oppressive thoughts, something evil written deep inside my skull. Oh my god, he's a bunny. <laughs> Awakening wild and pleasant memories. Actually, something good did happen. Olya watched with hope-filled eyes as a wicked smile spread on my face, faintly resembling the one from a box cutter knife. Another boy went missing. Tasha, do you think that's good? Why do you say that? My sister's voice trembled when she looked into my eyes through the thick lenses. You know, that other 
missing boys, Vova, maybe what happened to him was all his fault. Maybe he did something so bad that he no longer deserves to live. Don't be so cruel, please. Olya pressed her knees into her chin and hugged them with her hands, trying to take up less space. As if she wanted to shrink or even disappear altogether. It was the only reasonable thing for us to do, go missing among all the other broken toys. I think Olya is the only one in this family that is, like, normal. And never encounter evil parents or mad classmates. We're the only one left for each other. The only one who can protect, listen, and sympathize. I really want to know why he is he taking pills. Because they didn't even explain it. Like, never explain it. I want to know. Which means she's bound to listening to what I think about them all. Those beasts pretending to be children that are so eager to bully the weak. It was my turn to speak. I think they won't be the last. My breathing thickened. My fingers started banging on the wooden floor. People like them are not worthy of living, going to the same school with us. We're looking at, at your light. My thoughts got tangled. They slipped away among the calmness. Really? Tasha, stop it. You're scaring me. Don't be scared. I can protect you. Then I finally noticed that Olya was looking at me with like a, I was a stranger. Yeah, you're t talking about some really scary things for a child like her. Who, who are you? The rage that welled up inside me subsided. It hit under the glisten of my sourd cord cordliness, leaving me alone with a growling feeling of guilt for scaring my sister. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I guess I'm just going crazy about school. She rushed to embrace me, barely holding back her tears. It's okay, Tasha. Just please, never say anything like this again. I swear on mom's heart. Olya flashed me a bitter smile. And you told me I shouldn't say that. You're right, let's play, let's start playing already. I go first. Oh, this is so cute. Oh, really killing ducks? Oh. Wait, turn off? Why would I turn it off? I'm gonna kill one. I'm gonna let her win, maybe, a little. Oh, I can't kill that. Oh my god, I killed him by accident. No. What if she's gonna be sad? Oh, let's get dangerous. <laughs> She's not sad. Phew. I really want to make her like uh, happy at this. Okay, now it's my turn. Why would I turn it off though? I will will not do that. Yay! I got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me lose. Okay. I'm gonna kill another one, wait. Okay, I think this is enough. Yay! Ha! Who wants some more? Okay, final round. Wow, she's good, good at this. Final round, okay. Oh, come on. I have to not win, but at the same time, 
Okay. Oh, I killed two. She won! Yay! Bang bang, and they're dead. You've lost, Tasha. I'm a good brother, you know. My mom only managed to get through to me on her third attempt. Anton, there's a call for you. It's a girl. Oh my god, yes, it's Polina. I sobbed up in an instant and rushed to the hallway. Is it Polina? Watch your step. I grabbed the phone, pressed it into my chest, looking at my mom. She shrugged and went into the room, gathering the toys thrown around by Olya. And she went, Hello? Your mom has such a young voice. Well, yeah, I mean she's young. Are you busy right now? No, of course not. If only she knew how costly this conversation could be for me. What risk I took won't just answer this call. There were a pen and a shabby notebook laying on the nightstand. I picked uh, them up and started moving the tip of the pen across the paper, producing chaotic doodles that always ended up turning into hearts. I've been thinking, I need to tell you something. I froze. It can be. Does she like me? You've been looking so lost lately, and when I saw you at school today, you were pale like a ghost. I couldn't find words. My heart was flattered in anticipation i wanted to say that i'm on your side yes at least she's on my side at least i'm not gonna be getting the baddest ending a smile was spreading on my face in anticipation for polina's next words i feel so sorry for you oh no <laughs> i'm gonna be get bad at ending i guess good guys like you deserve better I want you to believe that you'll find the strength to fight back at some point, and others will sp sp stop picking on you. The pen fell out of my weak fingers. Is that all she's gonna say? Maybe you'll even find a girlfriend. No! <gasps> no! She sounded as if she was unsure of her own words. Well, I just wanted to let you know that you're a nice guy. It was a total failure. Compassion instead of an invitation to hang out. You there? Before I could reply, Olya desists the stairs. She was holding some book on the pink cover, ankles pulled of a young ma lady. Will you take long? I covered the handset with my hand. I'm in the middle of a conversation. What happened? Read me a bedtime story, please. Mom fell asleep. Go to your room, I'll be there in a minute. Just be quick, okay? Fine. I uh, last reply sounded excessively annoying, and I sighed, watching my sister running up the stairs. Hello, Polina? Sorry, I need to run. Can you imagine there's someone in love with me and he snoops ab un about under my windows demanding to go on a date with him? I'll go chase him away before Grandpa wakes up. <laughs> or maybe I'll give him a chance. <laughs> no, I'll be my lower lip in jealousy. I'll tell you tomorrow if you want. We're friends after all. No, it's the bad one. No, the lonely one. Why? <laughs> friends, at least she didn't say we were besties. Yeah, yeah, sure. Good. The buzz hammered at my brain. Dirty slug, an angry voice spoken through the teeth in my brain. Like a rattless zombie, devoid of, of a consciousness, I dragged my feet up the stairs. I wish I could tell Dad, ask for his manly advice, but he doesn't show up at home until a late night at night after all of his new job. My parents don't have time for me, to put it lightly. Well, where's the, your book? I shuddered. The kids' room was empty. Oh, yeah? She probably snuck into my room. I started walking down the corridor. 
The room was infested with shadow. The blades were va waving, wavering, like there was someone behind them. A smile sneaked towards the window and threw open the curtains. Oh no. Gotcha. There was nobody behind the cloth. The window was was a TV screen showing winter scenery. The lamp paused, the field, and a couple of walking figures in the middle of it. Elisa and Alia. I gasped and pressed my fist to my mouth, sinking my teeth into it. Okay, I think this is enough for today's video. I think I will um, post the final video tomorrow or after tomorrow. And then I want to try record... Uh, a video of other endings because I really want to see what will happen if uh, like Polina will be with me but that's so sad that I got the baddest ending why 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 like my choices are so bad really okay so please subscribe like this video and comment any game suggestions because after this game, I don't really know what to play. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!